Hello everyone, it's Helen from Journaling Planet and today due to a request from one of my subscribers we're going to be looking at how you use eyeshadows as a sort of pigment to make collage fodder. Now I've already done a video on lipstick and I've already done a video on nail polish, um, old nail polish that you might have sitting at the back of your um, bathroom cabinet and I will link to those below and today I'm going to um, take a visit to the eyeshadow graveyard at the bottom of my makeup bag and uh, create some uh, interesting marks on scrap paper or tea dyed paper that I've got in my stash. All I would say is I'm going to demonstrate some ideas but the results are going to largely depend on how much pigment there is in your eyeshadow, okay? And also the consistency of your eyeshadow. This is more of a cream, so I'll show you that versus this, which is actually, you can't tell anymore because I've been at it with my uh, paintbrush, but it, it was originally a powder, okay? Um, and I also have this um, little eye pencil in uh, gold, so probably make a few marks with that as well. I have already played around with a few ideas. I'll play around with a few more uh, whilst we're on camera. But essentially, um, the best techniques that I've found so far is these, the spatter technique. You get a lot of nice pigment, pigment when you spatter um, with those things. You can use stencils. To create kind of interesting and what color you have will also of course affect the outcome um, of your stenciling. I'll show you how I did that. You can do a mix of marking and spattering to get uh, more texture on the paper um, and this was just some dots using the eye pencil that I talked about earlier. This was an attempt with the uh, with a stencil. I don't think I particularly pick the best stencil but the markings are still quite interesting and when they're torn up as collage fodder of course it's going to um, contribute to a bigger picture when I collage. So this is all about getting away from just using plain brown paper all the time. This is just packaging paper. Um, I also use paper bags sometimes. I just tear a little bit off um, so you know I'm not wasting much if the technique doesn't pan out. Um, and then uh, just go to town making some marks. So most of my colors that I have in my eyeshadow graveyard are kind of autumnal. So I'm going to uh, create a sort of autumnal collage effect. And um, at the end, I'll create a little something using it, probably a little tag or a journaling spot, uh, just so you can see how it can be used in a collage, this kind of thing. Now there are some creases in this paper and I don't mind that, but if you're desperate to have a flat surface to work on, then you can of course um, iron papers. A lot of people do that because they really, really want those flat papers. Um, but let's just start off with some easy spattering techniques and I'll show you um, how I do that. Now I don't know if you've ever watched any watercolour tutorials, but um, what they recommend is you have a br brush that's sort of shaped like this, okay? And you get quite a bit of water on it and you also put quite a bit of water in the pigment that you're using. Uh, you create a sort of well in that pigment, okay? Um, and that's, you really get your brush in there. And then I'm just gonna start spattering just by tapping the top of the brush and you see immediately you get that pigment down. Of course, some of that is water but I, what I've found is that even after the pigment dries, uh, there's plenty of colour left, um, plenty of texture left. So that's really nice. So we'll get some um, kind of brown down there first. And just get that spattered. Liberally spattered. And then we'll choose a, a contrasting colour. I think we'll go for one of these um, kind of... I don't know what you call them, like pinky reds. So that I'm going to leave over to dry because that's got plenty of colour on it now, both brown and um, pink. So I'll put that to one side. 
and we'll try with some stripes next. So I'll just tear up another piece of paper. You can see I'm not overthinking this because at the end of the day, it's going to be one part of a collage. I don't want to spend, you know, the rest of time figuring out exactly what marks I, or what shapes I want to make um, on the paper. I just want to to go for it because at the end of the day, it is only going to be one component of a bigger piece of work. And I'm really just looking to add some texture. Now, you could have a go. If you're a fine artist, you could have a go at using these in the same way that other people use um, watercolours for fine art. And I'll show you sort of the, the closest attempt I made at that and um, the sort of outcome. But largely, I use paints and pigments to create abstract shapes. Okay. Put that to one side to dry. Next up, let's try some stencils. Let's just get a little bit of paper, get a stencil that will go with autumn theme. And I'm going to use this kind of waxier, creamier kind of gold colour. It is a very different consistency to, um, you know, the, the powders that I've been using. I'm just going to use a sponge and try just kind of mottling it on, see what happens. So that's come out quite nicely. Um, I find that it, it it dries quite quickly, this kind of material. The thing that you've got to watch is that you need to wipe your stencil off afterwards because otherwise it will stain uh, not very nicely. So just make sure that that's nice and clean. So we've done stenciling, some stripes, some spats. And now we're going to go in and try something a little bit more concrete rather than abstract. Um, so, first of all, let me show you a sort of nearly finished version of what I'm trying to create. So, hopefully you can see these leaves. They're created through the pig using the pigment um, from the eyeshadow. I haven't done this one yet because I'm going to show you how I go around the outline. I think it's fairly obvious. I just get a black pen. But what I do in terms of getting the pigment on and creating the shapes is I do the usual thing of creating like a well in the pigment as I showed you before. Plenty of water in there. Okay and then to do a leaf I'm really just creating a, a sort of teardrop shape using the pigment. So although it is going to end up being a concrete object, if you like, I am just still doing quite an abstract shape, which is a teardrop. OK, and then there are some other autumn leaves, aren't there, that are not as um, sort of shapely as that. They are more kind of bumpy. Don't ask me for the name of the leaves. I don't know. But I'm sort of drawing just a cloud shape, really, and then colouring it in with the pigment. And then what I will rely on later is going over it with my black pen to make the lines more defined and to give a, a better sense of what it is. Um, so it may look like nothing much now, but once you get a black pen to it, it will look like an autumn leaf. Just do another example over here. Uh, you can also do some um, kind of imperfect leaves with like a bit out, like cut out of them, you know, like if they fell to the ground and they got torn up as they did so, you can create that kind of effect. Running out of water here, get some more water in that pigment. You can tell when you're running out of water because the, it, the brush really um, drags across the paper. And that's not what you want, really. So we're just doing a bit of an imperfect leaf shape there. And we'll draw around that later. So you get the gist. It looks like a few 
brown blobs right now. <laughs> um, but when you go around them with a pen, uh, they start to look more like leaves. So I did just get a black pen. I'm going to speed this up. But it is just going to be me drawing around the edge and then putting some veins in the middle to connote that it's a leaf. Okay, so that um, pen wasn't very pleased with that because this isn't very dry, but you get the idea. Um, you just draw around it, you create the shapes. If you wanted to, you could fussy cut these out. You don't actually have to use them for collage fodder. They'd make really, really cute embellishments. Let's just see what they look like um, cut out. So there you have your leaf shape. Yeah, I think that's really cute and uh, we'll make a really nice embellishment. So actually, if you're going to go in with your black pen and create some leaves or other, other shapes, you could do this with, of course, any easily drawn nature shape like the sun or the moon or any of those kind of things. If you have the eyeshadow colours to, to make it happen. Uh, mine just happened to be autumn colours, so I decided to draw leaves. OK, so, yeah, very, very easy embellishment to make with some old eyeshadow. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to show you before I have a go at using some of this in a collage is it does make a difference if you use different kind of paper. So obviously I'm using packing paper, but um, I've, I've showed you at the beginning a sort of music paper swatch. I do think it comes out really nicely on this. I think possibly you could get nicer results because I've got very samey looking eyeshadows colours. People, you know, have bought me these colours uh, because they think they sort of fit what I might wear. And in fairness to them, if I, were, if I was a regular eyeshadow wearer, these are the kind of colours that I would wear. But I'm not a regular eyeshadow colour wearer. So they tend to just sit in a, in a bag and not have anything done with them. So... I'm going to just use them <laughs> in a slightly different way to how they were intended and do a little swatch at the bottom of this um, piece of paper. And it's just like you've probably seen, as I have on the Junk Journal channels, people using watercolours like this, just using it in exactly the same way, just using different shades. Oh, I do really like how this looks. I did circles before, so I'm doing a sort of more rectangular shape this time. I think it looks really, really nice. And the pigment dries it with a really interesting kind of iridescence to it because a lot of um, eyeshadows have almost kind of glittery um, substances in them. So there is a sort of slightly iridescent glow when they've finished drying, which I think is really nice. Let's just get some of this brown there, as much pigment as we can. Really dig on your pigment deep because the eyeshadow is not designed to be used as watercolour. It, you know, doesn't the pigment doesn't work that way, so make sure you dig plenty out with your brush. Okay, going again for a slightly different brown, and then we'll probably finish um, with a black if we have enough space. If not, the brown will be the last one. Let's have a look. The brown is going to be the last one actually. So that's really lovely and that will dry and I will use that in a collage. So as you can see it does work really beautifully on music paper, on packing paper. I haven't even shown you on screen the, the fact that you know I use the eye pencil to do some polka dots but you get the gist I think but it does work as a pigment. If you've got any old eyeshadows sitting there that are just not doing much of anything you could tear some off and um, and create some some swatches like this on some paper um, I have a suspicion that they'd also work well on something like a tea bag um, but I haven't tested that so there's an experiment for you if you have some old tea bags lying around for your tea dyeing so I'm just going to create a small journaling card this is uh, just the back of a a dog food, uh, <laughs> isn't he cute? Um, a dog food uh, box. I'm just going to trim this off and I'm going to do a collage. On here, it's going to be a journaling spot. I will cover the paper, uh, the back of the 
journaling spot with some uh, brown paper at some point. I'm just going to neaten up that edge because, as per usual, strut cutting straight is not my strong suit. There we go. Right. So um, I'm going to quickly do a collage. I'm going to speed it up. And I'm going to use some of the things that I've um, created in this session uh, or some of the ones that I created just before I came on camera in the collage. It's going to be an autumnal collage. And um, I'll show you the effects when we're done. bit of negotiation I tend to overthink things and I'm still wondering do I need a piece of washi here <laughs> so why don't we experiment since you can pull the washi right up if I don't like it um, I feel like it might make it look a bit too uniform but let's just give it a whirl yeah I think it's a bit much on that side um, I prefer it without, so that'll go back on the roll and I'll use it for something else, even though I've torn it. It'll be fine. So I felt like the marks from the um, eyeshadow, I don't know if you can see them. Oh, I just love how they look. This one is really, really pale on the music paper. It's very subtle, but I really like that. But I did think it was a bit too subtle. And, you know, I do have that big embellishment there that I made um, with the eyeshadow, but I just felt like I wanted to do something that emphasized the eyeshadow. So I spattered the whole thing with eyeshadow, um, sort of a pinky color and a, a black color as well. If you're wondering where I got these other, like, lovely autumnal, sentiments and um, stamps and stickers uh, there is a wonderful uh, I'm not sponsored by them but I do I they get a lot of money off me um, they are called Coracrea Crafts and uh, they do subscription boxes and this was their autumn subscription box and it came with you know lovely things like this in it I don't really subscribe to stickers if you've watched my eco journaling manifesto you will know why but I wanted everything else that came with it including this gorgeous washi tape which I didn't use in this project but I will use another one these beautiful cards that came with it uh, the stamps are just absolutely gorgeous uh, so I just I wanted all those things and the stickers came with so um, them was the breaks I had to take the whole package but um, I will reuse the plastic the backing plastic for something else um, so I used all the things that came in that pack and I used my including this you know, this piece of tissue paper here at the back um, was the package packing material that my subscription box came in so um, I, I used just things from that box and also my collaged um, fodder from the eyeshadow and then I splashed it all with eyeshadow 
And I, I really love how this has turned out. I haven't yet uh, covered the back in brown paper so I can write on it, but I will. I've got plenty of uh, brown paper just uh, hanging around. And I really, really love the texture of that eyeshadow on there and the, the sort of spatters it makes. So I, I do think that these little things, yes, perhaps they are a bit time consuming, but I think they add and they make something really unique. So I'm really pleased with how this has come out. A lovely autumnal piece for my junk journal. I will, of course, because I can't help myself, ink around the edges um, just to finish off the, you know, the sort of edge, get it all looking a little bit more uniform. But to be honest, uh, this is largely done. I'm just I'm just really going to put some brown paper on the back um, and that will be that. And um, I think when it comes to using things like eyeshadow, I can't tell you that they're an exact replacement for things like um, watercolours. But if you've not got the money for watercolours, uh, they make a perfectly fine substitute um, in a pinch, if you see what I mean. They still make some pigment on the page. Um, and you get some really interesting effects. The pigment could be darker once it's dried, but the more pigment you put on the page, then, you know, the darker it's going to be when it dries. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed experimenting. If you experiment with eyeshadow, um, please do. These are just cheap eyeshadows um, that I was given for Christmas one year. Um, maybe you use a slightly more superior brand and it gives you more pigment. Uh, please do share your findings either in the comments on your own channel and I'll link to you uh, on Instagram. You can find me at Journaling Planet and uh, I post most of my projects there for people to see. So thanks for tuning in. Please do hit the subscribe button if you've watched this long and I look forward to seeing you next time.